consider a function f that takes in a pair of real numbers from the domain and maps them to a single real number in the range. This kind of function can be called a multivariable function, as there are more than one input variable. In this video, we will explore the multivariable equivalent of the derivative for functions that are of the highlighted type. We can visualize two variable functions on a 3D graph by plotting z values for all x and y values in our domain. Now, let's get straight to the topic and talk about derivatives. For single variable functions of the highlighted type, derivatives measures the rate of change of the function with respect to its independent variable. But in two variable case, functions have two independent variables. So, in this case we actually have two of them. One that measures the rate of change of f with respect to x treating y as a constant. And another that measures the rate of change of f with respect to y treating x as a constant. These things have a special name, they are called partial derivatives. And we denote the like this. And yes, partial derivatives do have geometric interpretation. But, first we shall say an example on how we compute them. Consider this function of two variables, let's find both partial derivatives one by one. In order to find the partial derivatives with respect to x we just treat y as a constant and find the single variable derivative with respect to x. Similarly, to find the partial derivative with respect to y we just treat x as a constant and then find the single variable derivative with respect to y. Now, before we talk about the geometry of partial derivatives, let's write the limit definition. If you did the computation, then you would have noticed. For computing partial derivative with respect to x you just fix y and evaluate it just like a single variable derivative. Since x is allowed to vary and y is fixed, we can easily obtain the limit definition for the partial derivative with respect to x just by using the single variable limit definition. Similar logic follows for the partial derivative with respect to y. Actually, the limit definition is the key to the geometric interpretation of partial derivatives. For this video, we will just assume that the highlighted limits exist everywhere for our function. First, let's focus on the partial derivative of f with respect to x. For now we will just set y to be 0. Now, consider a point x lying on the x-axis. Consider another point a distance h away from it. Now, let's construct a secant line passing through the function at those two points. Now, this is the equation for the slope of this line. Doesn't it look a bit familiar? As h goes closer and closer to zero, the expression approaches the slope of the tangent line at x. Now, this is precisely the definition of the partial derivative with respect to x at y equals 0. Here we have it, the partial derivative with respect to x at y equals 0, just gives you the slope of the tangent line to the curve formed by the intersection of the surface z equals f of x and y, and the plane y equals 0. Now, we know what partial derivative with respect to x means geometrically at y equals 0. But what does it mean for an arbitrary y? Just like before consider two arbitrary points. 
Now, let's again create a secant line passing through the function at those two points. This is the expression for the slope of the secant line. Again it looks quite familiar. As h gets closer to zero, we get the slope of the tangent line at x, which is precisely the partial derivative with respect to x of f. Now, we finally know what partial derivative with respect to x means geometrically. It's just the slope of the tangent line to the curve formed by the intersection of the surface f of x and y, and the plane y equals some constant. But, what does partial derivative with respect to y mean? Just like the partial derivative with respect to x, the partial derivative with respect to y just gives the slope of the tangent line to the curve formed by the intersection of the surface f of x and y, and the plane x equals some constant. It's quite trivial to verify this. So, we finally know what partial derivatives are. And that's it for this video.